Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is broadcasting live all the way from Tuscany. I think she might be my first guest from Italy, and I cannot wait to hear all about what it's like being a vegan in Italy. I remember that movie, Under the Tuscan Sky, and or Under the Tuscan Sun. Either way, it sounds like it's gonna be a beautiful place to live. Her name is Margarita Restropro. She is the founder of the Naked Food magazine, of which I subscribe to and I would hold up, except that I'm moving in a couple of days and I have packed them and I have kept every single edition of that. Please welcome Margarita to the show. Boy, you live in Italy. That must be amazing, huh? And it's awesome. It's beautiful. It's, you know, I'm I'm literally surrounded by nature. So what's better than that, you know? So it, it is where are you from originally? I was born in Colombia, South America, uh, but I actually did all of my studies in the U.S. So I shared my U.S. life between Florida and California. How did and, you end up in Italy? Uh, that, yeah, that was that's thirty years. I mean, in U.S. in the U.S. And now, you know, I got married, and uh, my husband's Italian, so you know. One led to the other. In other words, uh, we are, we're now in Italy. We used to come here like once a year, you know, for family things. And now we're here. So it's wonderful. Lots of great stuff because you learn, you know, now I'm, I mean, I've learned pretty much traditional Italian cooking, but oil free, salt free, sugar free, uh, you know, plentiful. It's just it's wonderful. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's really good. That's amazing. I can't wait to hear your story. So wh when did you become vegan and why? Uh, I became vegan about, it's going to be 11 years ago. I, I truly wish um, it would have been longer, you know, like uh, that I, I would have sort of opened my eyes a little um, earlier in my life. But um, it happened actually for a health reason. And that health reason was that um, I, I used to live in LA at the time. And uh, I had a boyfriend who was also a musician. I'm a musician, by the way. So I used to do lots of, you know, lots of different work, um, including, for example, we did like uh, sound for movies, you know, like soundtrack to um, I've like written music for other artists, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, so we were in LA and um, he actually started to feel sick and like have these headaches and things. And to make the story, the, the story a little shorter, um, they found that he had a, um, a glioblastoma multiforme, which is a probably the most, um, the baddest cancers there are because it attacks your brain. Um, well, I say attack, but it just, it grows in your brain and it was really bad. And so they didn't give us a lot of, well, actually any hope for his, um, for his health or any kind of recu you know, recuperating at all. And so we started, we both started reading like right then and there, like in the hospital because he had to have it removed, you know, because it was huge and it was terrible. Anyway, so right there and there, we started like looking online, any, you know, scientific articles that we could find, any documents, any, anything that we could find about how to sort of defeat cancer uh, naturally, because they said, okay, you know, you can't, don't, I mean, you do chemo it's not going to do anything your radiation not going to do anything at the time i didn't know much about any of these things that's an 11 year career that i've mastered you know since uh, this whole thing started and anyway so the only thing that we could do was really change what we could control so we could control the food so we both cut every kind of added fat added sugar um, uh, and any kind of an animal, uh, well, processed food, of course, and any kind of, and every kind of animal 
uh, derived foods. So that day I became vegan and it's been 11 years. Like I literally had to, you know how these like people say, oh, don't worry, this is a process, you know, with time you get better. No, I had to do it in like one day. Like in other words, I was a carnivore. Uh, you know, we all grow, I guess, you know, it takes time sometimes. And then one day, then I was vegan, 100% plant-based and with no added anything. So that's, that's how I sort of came into this wonderful lifestyle. And, you know, it took me about a year really to, um, to become a person again, because the, it, it was a very difficult situation, difficult experience. And after that year, I said, I, you know, I have to help others. I have to, I have to share this story because there was something in the middle of this whole issue, there was something beautiful that happened. After we turned plant-based, uh, he got a second MRI, you know, when they check the, the progress of, of the cancer cells. And they actually told us that the cancer had reduced in growth 25%. Instead of growing, it had actually reduced in growth. So we were both like, really? Oh my God, really? Like, it was like, oh my God, wow. And so obviously neither of us wanted to touch any of that other stuff anymore. We were 100% plant-based. Well, he passed away, unfortunately, because the cancer, when they found it, it was already a stage four. It was a stage four. It was like really, really advanced. And, uh, but he was fine. He was, I mean, for the next, let's say six months or seven months, really, he was pretty okay. It was the last month, last couple of months that it was really difficult for him. But so that was the eye opening for me. You know, I realized that um, the power of everything that I, I was putting in my body, thanks to him in a way or, or in every way. And so I decided to create something to share this information out there because believe me that 11 years ago, there was, I don't know, I couldn't find so much information as, you know, comparing to what we can find today. You know, there's you, there's the recipes, there's this, that, like 11 years ago, I, I don't know, I just couldn't find a lot. And so I said, well, maybe I can do something um, I studied design and marketing in, in college. So I said, well, I, I had to start over. I had only a laptop and I said, okay, so what can I do with a laptop and my talent? And so I started a magazine. Never before I had ever, I had even like done a design for a. Oops, you froze for a minute. Magazine an ad or anything and I started and this is out. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, you just okay, froze for good. a second. It's such so, a beautiful magazine. So you, you had no publishing experience in the in the first thing you do is start a magazine. That's incredible. It's crazy. It's crazy, AJ, you know, it's totally crazy. But somebody's gotta be crazy and do these things. Somebody's gotta do it. So, I mean, we've all done it, you know, we've all started beautiful things. We've all done beautiful things. And so this, this was really what I could do. And so I did it. And uh, Naked Food has been around since 2013. So next year is going to be 10 years. Can you believe that? It's going to be 10 years of the magazine. That's incredible. Like, it's, it's so interesting how you said you literally went vegan overnight. Me too. It's like um, August 30th. Nine, so long, August 30th, 1977, I wasn't vegan and September 1st, I was. It's like, you know, so many people, and it's not that it's not okay to transition, but it's interesting how some people just pull the bandaid off and other people kind of take their time and ease into it. Yeah. I mean, I think that when you have something, if it's, you know, if it's a kind of like life or death situation, you do it, you do, you do, you do what you need to do. You know, you do whatever you need to do. And at that point, that's, that's, I mean, you know, a light 
came, I guess, upon us. And, and you know, we just said, okay, let's do that. Let's, anyway, we, we didn't really have any other hope or we, they didn't give us any other hope. And so we tried it and it worked, you know, and I've stayed with it, of course, you know, this wonderful lifestyle. And, and here we are. Tell us a little bit about the magazine. Where can people get it? Is it? Can they get it through subscription? How often is it produced? Can they get back copies? And what is, what's inside the magazine? Yeah, oh, well, the magazine, um, okay, so we produce four issues per year. Um, for example, this is, let me see, this is summer of last year. And let's see here. And so we talk about a lot of different issues, a lot of different things that really enrich our, not only our plant-based lifestyle, but also our, our heart, you know, our, our emotional being, our physical being. Um, we talk a lot about permaculture, for example, how to grow our own food. Uh, we talk about, uh, well, what's, what's really, what's really the truth about things that are not shared by, you know, the mainstream uh, medicine, mainstream, um, you know, like, for example, plants heal. Why is it that we don't know about it? In a mass kind of like, you know, knowledge, why don't we know about it? So we talk about all these things. We talk about your immune system, um, you know, for example, um, in this issue, this is, uh, this is winter of this year. We talk, you know, there's all kinds of beautiful recipes, of course. Um, all of our recipes are 100% um, plant-based, organic, non-GMO, um, oil-free, sugar-free. Um, we actually don't even put salt or any, you know, yeah, not any salt. Like we sprinkle, we, you know, we sprinkle a bit if anybody needs it. But all the recipes are made with whole foods. Everything is, you know, really making um, eating healthy a really cool thing to do, you know. Uh, and healthy, of course, very healthful in a way. Um, just showing people different, different ways to enjoy. Um, so, okay, so we produce it. Uh, four times a year. The website is nakedfoodmagazine.com. And if you go there, you'll see where to subscribe. Um, of course, we have recipes online. Um, you can also um, uh, buy t-shirts and all those things, you know, merchandise. But there's a lot of information on the website. Um, and uh, so that will get you started. Uh, we sort of base all of our advice sort of is based in the five pillars of health, which are nutrition, a little bit of exercise or physical uh, activity, um, sleeping, you know, like a good sleep is just absolutely necessary for your brain, for your cells, um, stress reduction, and to have um, as much as possible, a positive um, kind of like, social and support around you. You know, those are our five pillars of health. And so that's, that's, what we, that's what we share. Now, especially today, because we're here with you, I wanted to give a gift to all of your audience, everybody who may be watching. So we've produced, okay, it's been 10 years of uh, about nine years of naked food times four. That's how many? Okay, you're better at math probably than me. But all of these issues are available when you subscribe to either uh, um, a printed version of the magazine or a digital version of the magazine. So today uh, we have special code or coupon code, pr promo code Chef AJ. And if you go to nakedfoodmagazine.com and check on subscribe, you can have our digital, um, our digital subscription, which is four issues or one year uh, for $15.
it's a hundred and twenty two dollar value because you not only get the current issue but you get you get all of the past issues all of them so if you go there code you know promo code chef aj all one word chef aj you get four issues or one year of the magazine for 15 dollars. so it's a great 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 deal that's amazing. I didn't know about that. I'm going to add that very soon to the show notes and to the chat right now. Okay, cool. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Do you ever have guest contributors to your magazine, either chefs or doctors writing articles, things like that? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So you're right. I forgot to say that. So, so the magazine is, is um, the contributors are always experts um, in various areas, of course, experts in nutrition, plant-based nutrition, um, all kinds of, you know, aspects of health. Uh, we have, often we have um, Chef Dell, um, we have Chef Ramses Bravo, um, many chefs, me too, of course, I'm one of the naked food chefs. Um, I love preparing food, so I'm, I'm, I'm usually uh, showcased in the magazine. Um, but yes, of course. So there's a lot of uh, contributors to the magazine. If anybody wants to contribute also, please let us know because we're always looking for amazing recipe developers, um, people or you know, people who love uh, doing this kind of thing. Also, of course, for articles. So articles or recipes, just reach out. There's a, a section in the magazine that you can reach out to us. And that would be uh, great. We love, you know, sharing this with everybody. So that's amazing. I I, I know a good chef. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I, you've been you've been featured a few times. I'm just I kidding. Know. But if you want any of my recipes, I'm happy to give them to you. So I want to get this clear in the show notes. They can subscribe. I'm going to get the link to your website, and they can subscribe to the mess to the magazine either virtually or for the hard copies. And where do they put the code in Chef AJ? And what do they get? Because I'm typing this in the show notes right now. Okay, cool. So um, when they when so if you go to the um, the uh, www.nakedfoodmagazine.com there's a subscribe link on top and if you go there it takes you to another page like an order page and so today just today the digital subscription which you will see somewhere in order somewhere there if they put chef asia there's got to be a place where it says you know promo code something so they have to put Chef AJ, all caps, or, or it's fine, it doesn't matter, just without the space, just one word. And they will get their, instead of, it's usually $19. So for our viewers today, we have it at 15. Nice. Thank you so much. You know, you've written a book. Pleasure. You've written a book, because I have your book, but it's packed. Oh, I have written a book. Uh, I wrote that book, in fact, with my husband. Um, and uh, it's called Master Plants. Let me see if I have a, I don't think I have a copy here. Oh, I don't have a copy here. It's, uh, it's called Master Plants. Um, we wanted to do the plants as the masters instead of, instead of the chefs, because we can all become chefs. And so, um, so we chose 33 of the, of, of our favorite plants, because every plant is amazing and it, every plant offers, you know, nourishment and nutrition and benefits. And so we just pretty much took 33 of our favorite ones and we just did, we, we went further and we were, ta we were talking about not just the plant, but where it comes from, how the ancient civilizations used it. Uh, of course, it's benefits. Um, but uh, we also added how, so how it was used in the past and how it's used today. But it's great. 
Oh, you just froze for a second. Because, you know, for example, uh, we all love quinoa. We've known quinoa. Um, is, it, is it good? We're good? Yeah, we're back. We can okay. guys, she's all the way in Tuscany. And I, I still can hear more about <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So for example, uh, but we think that quinoa is kind of new or we don't, we don't know, you know, we started talking about quinoa, maybe more popular in a, in a popular way, like maybe 10 years ago, but the truth is that quinoa has existed for, for so many, I mean, for thousands of years. And so how was it used and where does it come from? You know, so it, it's, it could actually be a wonderful, way to also teach children about where how you know where food comes from and how these foods really help us um grow and you know how they give us so many benefits but also history about it you know because people don't know ah oh, where does it come from where does it come from and there's a lot of amazing foods that come from americas from the americas others come from asia Europe, etc. how they were brought to America, you know, like all these things are interesting. So it is a cookbook, but it has a lot of interesting facts and things. So, so that's our, our, our master plans. That's fantastic. You know, we had called this, epi- you know, I always ask the guests what they want to call the episode. And you said wild edibles for optimum health, natural medicine, and self-sufficiency. So yep. talk a little bit about that because that's not something that I'm very familiar with. I mean, a little bit, but not too much. Great. Yeah, no, awesome. Yeah, so, you know, um, well, I mean, we're kind of used to by now to appreciate, of course, whole foods. We love whole foods and we know, you know, our vegetables, our fruits, our legumes, our, our nuts, our seeds, right? But Mother Earth, actually gives us nutrition everywhere. And there are other types of trees, like for example, pine trees, that, um, yeah, they give us the nuts, but the leaves are also nutritious. So for example, pine needle uh, tea, like if you do an infusion with pine needles, is incredibly detoxifying. So pine needles are one of the things that here, I have two two pine trees in, in my house in Tuscany. And so, uh, every time, because they're super tall, but every time a, a little branch falls, I always take the leaves, you know, the, the, the needles, kind of, yeah, they're kind of needles, and uh, I make uh, an infusion with these. So it's not just the trees. It's also, for example, you know, a lot of people love to grow um, a beautiful garden, you know, and so I'm, I'm very much into that. I do vegan permaculture uh, in here. And so I, I, we're growing a, a good percentage of our, our food, which is wonderful. Um, but, you know, these wild edibles, what, what are they really? Well, a lot of people think that to get wild edibles, you sort of have to go to the wild and, or have to go to the forest or you have to go to Amazon. Uh, <laughs> something like that. And the truth is that these wild edibles grow in our backyards and we don't recognize them and we don't know them because we haven't been really taught to appreciate them, but they're amazing. They're amazing. They have as, as many nutritional benefits as, as the foods that we already love, like broccoli or potatoes or whatever. So I am going to, I got some pictures of some of the, I'm going to show you five wild edibles that I enjoy here in my garden and that I eat very much frequently. I try to choose one wild edible per day um, and I want to tell you about them. So I'm going to share my screen to show you some pictures. Let me see, and here, just tell me if you can see my screen. I can, maybe just change it into viewing mode because I'm seeing the slides on the left as well. Maybe there's a slideshow, maybe there's a button that says slideshow, or if you can't, it's fine like this, but there's usually a button like start or slideshow. Okay, let me try again. So share screen. 
Sorry, guys. That's okay. Are you using Google Slides? I'm using Keynote. Keynote. Okay. I'm not as familiar with that one, but it, it's like there's usually what's called presentation mode. Like and this? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Yay. 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 Okay. Cool. Awesome. All right. So, so yes. Okay. So we, so we think that, you know, these wild edibles are sort of like in the wild, but the truth is that they're growing literally behind us, like in our backyards, in our front yards, etc. And so I wanted to share with you today, five of my, they're not necessarily my favorite because I've been studying um, actually herbalism and, um, and wild edibles for the last two years because I've gotten a, a lot into permaculture and you know companion planting. Companion planting means that you plant, let's say, um, strawberries with, uh, let's say, near onions because they enhance their flavor. Not the strawberries are not going to taste like uh, onions. They actually it's kind of like they help each other grow and so they enrich each other's soil, you know? So like one provides no nitrogen, the other one provides more carbon, et cetera. It's kind of like what composting, uh, composting does, you know? So it's really interesting. Anyway, so I got into these wild edibles. And so, you know, like that's kind of like the question that I want people to, um, to ask themselves, is it a weed or is it food? Well, actually, you know, a lot of weeds are amazingly uh, not only tasty, but nutritious. And they're so great for us. And we just step on them. You know, we literally step, them, step on them because we don't know them. And so, you know, a weed is usually something that, well, people call it a weed because it grows in a place where they don't want it to grow, in other words. If you have like a beautiful lawn of just grass and there's a little weed that comes or, or a different plant that comes out, you call it a weed, but it shouldn't be a weed. It's also a plant, you know? So they're just spontaneous, but they are very much soil enriching. So for example, uh, there are plants that grow in certain uh, types of soil because they bring calcium to the surface or they bring, um, nitrogen to, to, to the soil around them and they actually um, improve the soil. And you know that our foods, our whole foods depend on the soil, 100%, the quality of the soil, the better quality of soil we have, of course, the better food we will have. We don't want anything with chemicals. We don't want anything with pesticides or herbicides or you know, all of that stuff. We want natural and organic, but how to, really grow organic and natural if we don't enrich the soil. How do we enrich the soil? With the same foods, for example. Every time that we're in our kitchen cooking, right? And we have, let's say, scraps of the, the carrot buds or potato peels or orange peels or whatever comes from our kitchen, we put it in a little uh, composting uh, bucket or whatever, or even if, even, you know, wherever you, you can. And just place a, a, a little corner in your garden where you can add, let's say, uh, dry leaves, uh, you know, small little, or, yeah, small, small branches. Um, when you cut the grass, you can also put that grass uh, there, like on top and like make layers. So these layers, this is what's called, you know, uh, composting and these layers you know after weeks and months uh they become soil literally soil but because you've enriched them with all these scraps and of course with uh, green matter and brown matter which would be the, the dry stuff then it becomes amazingly rich you know amazingly good and so for anybody out there or anybody who's listening who loves or would like to grow their own food, for example, composting is absolutely necessary because then you don't need to buy like soil or anything from, you know, outside. You're growing kind of like you're, you're 
literally growing your own soil kind of thing, you know? So that soil then you can use after in garden and enrich the whole foods that we want to eat. And so lastly, of course, they're health benefiting because they are, they could be even more healthful than the whole foods that we're eating. Why? Because, well, they are growing in very difficult conditions. In fact, I know it has happened to me too, that the wild edibles grow like amazingly while my broccoli is having a hard time growing, you know? And why is that? Well, it's because, you know, it's like, it's not that they're stronger, but they, um, I guess they're used to, you know, hardship. And so they just grow like crazy. So, okay, so let's go with the first one. So this is my first, uh, my, far, my first wild edible. I don't know if perhaps you can, if perhaps people can uh, guess what it is. I'm sure that there are people who know what this is. Anyone? Okay, I can't guys, see the... Our, our chat, guys, if you know in the chat, please put what you think it is. It just takes a couple of more seconds. I'm hoping you're going to get to my favorite weed. I eat something called purslane. I don't know if you're familiar with that. If they Oh, have I love it. Oh, my. Does it I have, it. Do you, does it, what is it called in Italy? Because where I teach in Mexico with the spas, they call it vertilago. Vertilago. Mm, you know, it could be, I, I'm really bad with the Italian names for these plants. I has, I have to learn them, okay. but people it could are, be. People are guessing it that it's either chamomile or chickweed. Those are the guesses we see in the chat. Well, whoever said chickweed, Nancy said chickweed and Cher <laughs> Sherilyn said chickweed. We got a lot of smart people in this audience. Yep. I've never heard of chickweed. Very good. Well, chickweed is completely amazing. AJ, you would love it because with chickweed, you can do literally everything. Imagine like a, uh, like having a spinach galore in your garden because you can you can cook it you can eat it raw in other words as you know you can use it as cut it uh, chop it whatever use it as the base of your salad of course add kale or add what, whatever other greens you like whatever you like in your salad but it's a great salad base but you can also cook it and so with it cooked you can use it as uh, you know you can uh, saute it you can do pesto, you can do anything you want. So cooked is amazing. It doesn't have any, uh, it doesn't have a, 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 a strong flavor. So it can go either way. You know, you can even do a cake, like chop it really small and then, you know, use it. Uh, well, I mean, my recipes sometimes are kind of crazy because I use all kinds of things, you know, but for example, um, I've used this as pesto and I've used it um, as a filler. And of course, I've sauteed them and they're awesome. So look, for example, medicinally, in other words, what benefit uh, do they give us? They have copper, phosphorus, calcium, potassium, vitamin C. Just, just so you know, like all these greens that we're going to talk about today, they're really uh, packed with of course chlorophyll because you know chlorophyll the the green in plants means that it's you know packed with chlorophyll but lots of vitamin c lots 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 more than kiwis and oranges and all these fruits like in other words this would be a great um edible to add to our um you know, to our daily uh, food. Just, you know, one of the things that I recommend is if anybody's interested in getting like, a, um, you know, more information about wild edibles, I would get a really good book that can guide you to start, you know, because yes, there are plants that are similar that, oh, this may not be chickweed and this is chickweed. Oh, chickweed is actually very easy to to recognize once you sort of get get you know used to it but um 
but it's a wonderful plant in all the five that we're going to see. So yeah, get, get yourself like a good guide, you know, to get you started into foraging. This is, you know, so you're foraging in your own backyard. How cool is that? And so, yeah, so this is from the carnation family. Carnations are these beautiful flowers that we all know. Um, and you can eat the leaves, the stems, the buds, and the flowers. Yeah. And they're uh, truly. Sunita says, did you say that it tastes like spinach? No, no, it's kind of, it, it, it has a mild taste, you know, it's like a type of, the texture is a little bit like spinach, but the flavor, it really doesn't have a strong flavor. So you can go, you can do savory or you can do sweet, even if, you know, if you want to. For smoothies, for example, chickweed is like awesome because you just get a handful, cut, you know, like, I don't, I don't, every time I forage any plant, I never take the roots. Why? Because I want the plant to continue growing. So every time, just take your scissors, you know, just get a, a big pair of scissors. You take the plant, you cut it and then, you know, rinse it a little bit. Make sure, I also make sure that it doesn't have like any little bug stuck in it or something, you know, so I kind of like go like this so they can like, fly away or something then you rinse it and then put it in your blender add whatever you want and that's that's your vitamin c that's your chlorophyll and you know lots of different um other benefits yeah i forgot about this it also um it's great for the skin so usually for example let's say that you're out and you're having fun with family or something and you you get a bruise uh, or you get a small cut in your skin, just take a little bit of chickweed, you chew it, and then you put it where, where it hurts. Of course, make sure that it's not like an area where they put pesticides or, or any kind of chemicals. And don't ever forage in like public places because you know that they put all kinds of things. I, mean, so they probably forage, spray, I bet they spray chemicals. Yeah, lots. Lots, lots. So just forage in areas that you know that are truly natural, like your backyard. You know what you put in your backyard, you know, like you put, you is it organic, you know, or is it like, does it have chemicals? So if you know, just forage in those places that you know are safe. Don't ingest anything that has chemicals. Okay, so this was our first. If anybody has a question? All right. I guess you're actually there is a question from Kathy. Yes. Are there any weeds that grow in yards that basically get mowed each week that are dangerous to eat? That's a good question. Look, from the uh okay, I have learned so far probably let's say 30 wild edibles, like really good, like learn them really, really well. And from these 30 that I've uh, learned, one, I've realized that is bad. And um, uh, the name of this one, perhaps if, if people want to uh, browse it, is Atrium Italicum. It actually grows a lot. Atrium, like, yeah, I think if I'm not wrong atrium italicum and it's uh, it, it grows like crazy it grows a lot so for example that's one of no no that that's that's one that we want to know to not eat but that's the thing that you know if we if we learn a little bit about the plants and of course never eat something that you're not a hundred percent sure of what it is that's that's uh, definitely good you know that, that's good advice just make sure like you know buy a good book browse the internet um you know browse there's tons of youtube videos uh also videos of course on odyssey all these other websites <coughs> where you can learn more about how to identify these weeds you know because something could be not good but literally from the 30 that I've learned only one has been uh like one that I that now I know is toxic so not I didn't need it before so I, I learned from before 
Nice. Well, chickweed is very, it's very pretty. Okay, so I will go for, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. The little flowers are adorable. Are completely adorable. Kind of like baby Okay, cats. so this is our second. Ah, good. Good. So a lot of people confuse this with clover. People think this is clover, but it's not clover. Anybody does I, I wonder if anybody knows what the name of this. Um this is an amazing, amazing plant. I have it growing in some areas of my yard and this is called wood sorrel it's not clover uh, and a good way to sort of differentiate uh, wood sorrel from um, from clover is that wood sorrel like if you see like the, the three petals have uh, the shape of a heart they're so cute it's a little heart there's three little hearts together while the um actually the uh the clover they're round they're kind of like there's no shape you know in other words they're just round so that's that's very easy um so what's so uh, you know scientific the uh, name is oxalis uh it's also great raw but you want to eat not as the base of your salad, for example, not like chickweed. You want to put little bits, you know, just kind of like, because the flavor of this one is strong. It actually tastes like, it's very citrusy. It tastes like lemons. Um, and so you want just little bits because otherwise it's like, wow, it's too much. It also has oxalic acid, but all the acids and so you just you know you want to put um you you want uh, you want to put little bits um okay and you know one of the great benefits of wood sorrel is that it is a cleanser so it actually helps you get rid of or detoxify um metals like lead arsenic, uh, well, like lead and mercury in poisons like arsenic. Uh, and it's also a great source of, source of iron. So for example, for the people who tend to have an anemia uh, and um, eat lots of beans for certain reasons or whatever, um, and, you know, just enhance their, uh, their, the quantity of iron that they are consuming. Now, the way that I like to use this one, I do put little pieces in my salad, but I also love making real, uh, lemonade because the flavor is so nice and so uh, citrusy that in the summer, for example, um, even now in the spring, you just sort of, you can either uh, blend it, in other words, just water. If you wanna put dates to, to sweeten it a little bit, you know, just of course remove the, the pits and then put like a little handful of wood sorrel and it just becomes a lemonade and it's so refreshing and so amazing that is, is, is it's worth it. Now the wood sorrel has uh, sometimes white flowers and sometimes yellow flowers. So the flowers are edible, the leaves are edible, the stems are edible and the seeds are edible, but I don't know the seeds yet. In other words, I haven't enjoyed the seeds yet. It's always something to learn, you know? Okay, it looks like so this is my clover. next one. Yeah. I was gonna say it looks a little bit like a four-leaf clover. Yeah, it does. It does, and that's why a lot of people think that oh, look, I found clovers, but no, 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 it's not clover. It's actually wood sorrel. All right, so this is our, our next one, and it's not a great picture because that the 
leaf that has the purpley stuff, just disregard that. Just disregard that because just a little bug was having fun there. And, you know, so disregard that part. Just focus on, on the other leaves. But so this, I don't know if anybody's guessing, but this one, uh, it's, it's a really amazing plant. Um, and it's called curly duck. So curly duck, uh, you know, the scientific name, Rumex crispus. It's also a leafy green that we can consume either raw or cooked. So raw, yes, you could put it in your salad. It has, it does have a taste. So I personally prefer it cooked because um, it's, it's mild, but sometimes, I don't know, maybe it doesn't bother me, but I prefer it cooked. So I, I guess after a while you sort of say, okay, I like these raw and I like these cooked, you know? So, um, so cooked, you can use it any way you want any way that you would use spinach or um, Swiss chard or kale, I guess, you know, any way you would wanna use it. You can use it in soup, you can use it for your smoothie, you can use it um, and Parmesan free. Uh, so curly duck, all the family, of dock of dock plants is huge there's like curly ones there's um uh, there's there many and they're all edible uh and they're all good they have great uh benefits this one in particular is very good because it also helps you it helps you detoxify heavy metals so just like uh the one that we saw before it, uh, it helps you with lead, arsenic, and mercury, and others, other stuff. Um, it's also a great source of iron. All of these, by the way, they're full of fiber. So they're all fiber. And, they, and, it also, and, they, and it's also great for the skin. Believe it or not, this plant is from the buckwheat family. So when the plant is large or when it when it when it grows it it's it has like shoots you know like these shoots kind of like like a buckwheat or like amaranth and so you can actually take the seeds and you can cook them just like amaranth or like with buckwheat so it's there's so such great plants you know because you can use any part of it so, okay, so this was early, uh, curly duck, duck, um, really great plant. All right, yeah, from here, so you can, of course, use the leaves, the stems, uh, the, the flowers that, you know, those that I was mentioning to you, you get the seeds out of it too, and enjoy it in many, many, many ways. There's a question, is- Are you gonna say, oh my God, this lady, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'm go so ahead. sorry. Um, it's just that I, I, it, my chat goes quickly, and if I don't ask it, it might disappear. Is Curly Duck sold commercially in markets? Wow, that's such a good question. Uh, you know, I think that nowadays we might find it. Yes, we might find it. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. But it grows so widely everywhere that you know it's probably easier to get it from your backyard or you know from from place that you know instead of the store also because you don't you never know yeah you buy something at the store but you don't know you know what process what process has it's I don't know. Right. Exactly. Plans that are becoming, are becoming. 
Oh, your audio is your audio's glitchy a little bit now. I hope it comes back. It's not clear right now. Okay. It's better. So I, I you're right. Uh, okay. Okay. Great. Uh, okay. Okay. A okay, couple um, more questions. Let me if you don't mind. see if I can make an. Yeah, it's getting better. Yeah. Might read a couple more questions. Sunita asks, "Have you ever eaten wild mushrooms and truffles?" Uh, uh, good question. Um, okay. I have only eaten wild and there is a variety that grows here in my yard uh, that are corals, M-O-R-E-L-S, morals. And morals are amazing. They're really good. There's a little space uh, kind of like at the end of the yard where I have a few that really grow, uh, of course, near trees, uh, in humidity, you know, humid areas, shady areas. And so, yes, I've, I've enjoyed uh, these morals are great, sauteed, all they're great. And uh, it's very easy actually to identify them because they're hollow inside. So if you get, um, if, if you find one, of course, do your research first, you know, watch some videos, do your research. But when you find them, they look like, you know, like they kind of look like the, 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 the Smurfs of uh, houses. Remember the little Smurfs? Kind of like, you know, with the top and then a little, Kind of like white uh, bottom. They usually the top is usually either beige or black. Kind of like, um, and so when you cut them open, if they are hollow, they're morals. If they're full, they're not. Then you don't want to eat them. So that's kind of like the, the a good identifier. So you have to pick it and bring it to your kitchen and check it. But those are great. Yeah, I enjoy those. I, I, I haven't eaten them that many times, but, but, uh, but yes, I have those. Maybe there's another question. There, there was a question from Kathy. Where does wood sorrel generally grow? Wow, oh, that's great. Uh, great question, guys. Um, well, wood sorrel, literally, there's so many different places, but I see it a lot uh, sometimes in pots, you know, like like if you have a, a, a pot with a flower or with a plant, like next to it, usually sometimes uh, you get sorrel. Um, so if your soil is, you know, from your compost or you buy like organic soil, and after a while, you see these little sh hearted shoots that come out. Just don't, don't go like, oh, these are weeds. Let me clean. Just take them, you know, and enjoy them because they're great, great for you. I have seen them a lot in pots and um, uh, more like dry, you know, in dry areas. Sometimes you see them like next to the, like near the trees, near the roots. So, yeah, and, you know, like I said, but it's, it's also, uh, well, clover is great too. I mean, there's white clover and red clover. Um, you know, they have these little flowers that come out uh, afterwards. So that's a, a, a great green to have too. It's just that these have a very specific flavor. You know, wood sorrel has a very specific flavor. And they're, you know, they have different properties, sort of the same, similar, lots of vitamins and all that stuff. But sometimes they have um, properties that you don't want to miss, you know, that you definitely want to add to your diet. So that's, that's, that's great. Thank you. Let's see if there's any more. People are talking a lot about dandelions. You haven't covered those yet or. Yet. <laughs> not yet great and let's see there was another oh let's see 
when you say that this or that plant is good for the skin, do you mean as a result of eating them or do you mean applying them to your skin somehow? Great question. Um, yes, some of these are absolutely amazing as ointments, you know, um, or uh, creams you can make. Uh, most of these heal the skin literally if you put the plant next to your to the part that you need healing. Or you can make like a face mask, you know, just sort of food, uh, use the food processor. And uh, I'm sure that every, well, a lot of people have different, um, let's say ways to make a face mask, but you can do, for example, any of these greens, you can put orange, a little uh, a, a spritz of orange or lemon, um, and uh, you know put a, any sweet any sweetener that you use, like plant, you know either date paste or anything that you may use uh, to make that you know a little more compact, and then put it in your skin. So yes, the, most of these can absolutely be used, let's say orally you know, on your skin. But for example, right now um, I'm making, well, this is the first time I'm trying this, but I'm trying to make my own creams. Uh, I don't, I'm kind of tired of the commercial ones because there's always something that I don't like. There's always an ingredient that I'm weary about or I'm, uh, you know, I don't like so much. And so um, I'm doing my, I'm trying to do my own cream and I'm using, uh, I don't know if it, well, we've all seen them, I'm sure. I'm using English daisies, which are the, the actual, the original daisies. They're like super tiny white uh, daisies that grow. Oh, they make these, they, they make your yards look like prairies. They're, they're beautiful. Bellis perennis, it's the actual Latin name. And so I'm, I'm actually using these to create my creams. And uh, we'll see how that goes, you know. But they can also be used for creams and soaps or shampoos. Um, some of, of course, all wildflowers are amazing because you can use as, uh, as you know, you can use perfumes, or, you know, the, 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 the scents. And so, for example, lavender is amazing. Uh, I get lots of lavender where I am. And so I usually take the, you know, the, the flowers and do something with them. Uh, uh, I also get, uh, there's a tree that only flourishes uh, in the spring. And uh, the name is Forsynthia, Forsynthia. And it gives like beautiful yellow flowers. And I am making, I've, I've gathered a bunch because I have a little tree here that, that is Forsynthia. And so you can gather the flowers and uh, make, of course, you can add them to a lemonade or like you can add everything to the smoothie. In other words, the smoothie, you can don't worry about that. But, you know, like if you want to do something pretty, you can, for example, add them to like ice, ice cubes. And then when you have a cold drink, there's a little flower like it's, it's pretty um, or. Uh, with this uh, for Cynthia, I'm actually using them. I'm going to use them as infusions, in other words, like tea, like infused, yeah, like, like tea. Um, but you can also use them, of course, as uh, creams and lotions or ointments or uh, mm -hmm. things like that. So um, sweeteners even, you know, so that, you know, the, in this uh, last issue of the magazine, let me see. Yeah, and in this issue, we talk about uh, wildflowers. This is the uh, summer, actually, the summer 2021. We talk a lot about wildflowers and how to use them. So maybe if somebody's interested in that, that would be a good issue to, to get. But uh, anyway, I don't know if you have any more questions or if we should continue with this one. Please, please. Ah, I was going to say that. Okay, I know I was gonna say that people must be thinking like, oh my God, this this lady brought like only like, you know, green plants. And it's like, how are we gonna ident identify them? But, you know, to be honest with you, like it's funny because now I walk, like if we do, 
you know, if we walk around uh, around a little city or somewhere, it's funny because yes, I, I the buildings are amazing, but I'm always looking on the ground. Oh, that's wood sorrel. Oh, that's uh, mallow. Oh, that's you know, it's funny. It's like an, a whole new world, sort of like um, I don't know, opens and and you start appreciating on. Um, I don't know nature in a different way too you know I mean I love you know nature I don't think that I would I don't think I would still would be here if it wasn't for nature so I love nature but I love the fact that we can have all these amazing plants everywhere you know and, and most of us don't know I didn't know just only by learning and you know really diving into it you you get to to know them so for example this plant that that's in the screen right now. Um, I don't know if anybody knows it, if they want to guess. It's been there a while, so I don't know if anybody has said it. Um, but this actually, it's called plantain. And it has nothing to do with the bananas or the bigger bananas that we know. Uh, actually, the Latin name is plantago. But this plantain has two versions this one that we're looking at it's the broad leaf leaf sorry the the, the, the yeah the big leaf um because there's another version that has like narrow leaves so this one is called broad leaf the other one is called narrow leaf but they both have these little lines in the like these uh, the veins in the leaves and this plant, AJ, this plant is like, I think this is kind of like the kale of the, uh, let's call them domesticated, because these are wild. So I guess the other one should be domesticated. So this is like the kale of, of the ones that we know. Why? Because you literally can use this for absolutely anything and if you had no other food at all or any anything to any other source of food this will save your life this little plant here will literally save your life and so it's an amazing plant oh, of course rich in fiber but it's it's very 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 rich in fiber all those little lines, the veins in the leaves that you see, go to the, in other words, from the, from the beginning of the stem to the end of the leaf, kind of like um, celery. You know how with celery, you sort of, like if you break a piece of celery, the veins keep, like you, they're strong, you know, those veins are like super strong. Sometimes you can't even chew them at all. Well, this is like that, but, but you can actually chew the veins. So this is a great plant. Uh, if you ever see it, just, I don't know, try to like cut around it. For example, this one, I, I, do, I do a no dig permaculture. No dig meaning, it means that I don't dig on the ground to plant my stuff. You know, it's, I add layers to the ground instead of digging. But so with this plant in particular, I had one. I only had one little plant in my garden. So I very carefully um, just, you know, did around it to get the root and plant it somewhere else. Because I, I was going, to, you know, we had to cut the grass some time. And I couldn't leave it there because it was literally in the middle. And so... So I just took it and planted so well, somewhere else. So hopefully it'll leave. So from so this little plant here is full of calcium, just like the other leafy greens. But this was special. This is especially great in calcium and beta carotene, and it also helps reverse blood poisoning. Like imagine how amazing this one is. Like anything that goes in your blood right now or a year ago or six months ago this can help you detoxify that so 
definitely put it in your smoothies. Definitely, you can use it in salads. Definitely, you can you know cook it if you want uh, or add it to other dishes. I, for example, make a really great uh, a baked rice recipe, and I always add green. So the the rice actually comes out like it's literally green. Um, but it's delicious, it's delicious. And so you can use that any way that you want, you can use plantain. Any questions about plantain or any other ones, you uh, tell me, Mary Jane. I don't know if there's a question about plantain, but there's a question about moringa leaf powder, if you know anything about that and its uses. Oh, uh, moringa is great. Moringa is kind of, at this uh, very similar level of plantain because it's an amazing plant. Um, of course, if you get the powder, it's good. But if you get the original plant, it's even better, you know? So with all of these plants that we've seen today, you can also, you can definitely do infusions, you know? Um, you can dry the plant or of course use it raw but what i do of course because in the winter i don't have the availability of these plants so what i do is i i dry the plants you know upside down you know, if they have flowers or anything so just upside down i have a place the kitchen where i hang all of my all of my plants that i'm drying and then after a while you sort of you know they're so they're, they're dry, so you can like, um, you know, make them yourself like powdery or, you know, I do the same with all, all the herbs, you know, oregano, um, yeah, marjoram, like all, all of them. So um, anyway, so you can take moringa or any of these and do that process, either dry them and then use them in teas or infusions. Um, or just make an infusion when it's raw. So yeah, Moringa is awesome. If you have the possibility of getting it um, more raw in the sense like maybe the plant, maybe try to get a Moringa plant. If it doesn't grow in your, in your area, then yes, get the powder and it's great. It's definitely a good plant to have. Great. Okay, and the last plant that we're gonna see today, I'm guessing that everybody's typing. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so any guesses? Any guess? It, it AJ, does, it does take you? a minute. Where there is a little bit of delay in the chat. So, guys, can you guess what this is? And in the meantime, I'll ask a question from Kathy. Are there any other plants that look like plantain that might be dangerous if you're thinking they were plantain? Um, that's a great question. There is a really great identifier of plantain. So yes, of course, I mean, there are similar plants, but you know, one of the things that maybe this is a good time to say it. Yes, of course, we don't wanna eat anything that we don't know, but this whole thing about plants being toxic is, is something that it's kind of like a, um, it's not right. In other words, it's not right to, it's kind of like a fear that, that, uh, that we've sort of grown with. And, and it's not like that. I mean, most plants are not toxic. Yes, they might, there might be one or two or this, and you do need to um, identify them and learn to know them. But, but it's not true that, that all of them are, or most of them are toxic. Um, so, uh, the, like, AJ, the question specifically was to that, identify. Does anything look like uh, plantain that we should be avoiding? And we've got lots yeah, of right. comments now in the chat. Everybody's guessing that oh. that is dandelion, but one person guessed marigold and they want to know if dandelion flowers are edible. Okay, great. Okay, so, so for 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 the uh, the person who asked about plantain, 
Plantain, thankfully, has an amazing identifier. And is that, remember those stems that I was mentioning, Valerie? In other words, the, the stems grow all through the leaf, from the stem through the leaf, all these, all these, um, they're like fiber, they're like nylon, you know, it looks like nylon. Anyway, um, so you can break a, a leaf of like this, the little stem of plantain and sort of go like this, watch a video because there's lots of videos of how to identify it, but you go like this and you will actually see the, these little uh, fibers right there. Like it's, it's the craziest thing. Like I have, I actually have one, but it's drying. So uh, let's, let me see if I can show it to you. Okay, so I have this, I have this leaf that, um, oh man, I don't know if I can show it, let me see. I'm drying it, so don't, don't, you know, don't misjudge her because she's looking a little sad. Um, but, okay, so here you can see, I don't know if, if you can see me, but so it has like this, the, the veins and I cut it here and you can literally, you can see the little fibers there. So anyway, watch a video and learn how to identify because it, 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 this plant, that plant is literally amazing. Okay, so for this one, for those folks who said that it was dandelion, yay, yes, this is dandelion. This is the amazing and famous dandelion. Yes, dandelion flowers are completely edible. They're actually delicious. Uh, when I'm outside working in the garden, and I see one. I just go on, uh, you know. They're I, they're delicious. They're they're fun to eat. Um, the stems are, uh, they have a flavor that I don't enjoy that much. But the flower is really great. It's chewy, you know. It's good. So dandelion. Um, the Latin name is Taraxacum. Nobody's gonna remember that. Uh, but they are actually from the aster family. I don't know if anybody knows aster flowers, but they're beautiful. They're great for the garden too. And so dandelions are part of that. And the, you know, culinary wise, you can use it the way you want. You can decorate a salad with the raw uh, flowers or the leaves. The leaves are absolutely um they are the taste they do have a taste they're a little mm, they have a hint of sour but if you choose the the younger leaves instead of the older leaves the bigger leaves are of course they have more flavor the younger ones are more tasty so usually i just take the, the small ones the younger ones um but look, dandelion, the reason why it's so famous, it's, it's because it's really, it's amazing. It has vitamin A, B, uh, sorry. Yeah, well, B, but in small, smaller quantities. So vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. So uh, you know how a lot of us say, oh, but... You know, I need to take a supplement of vitamin D. Well, in some cases you might, but dandelions, for example, are a great source of vitamin D. A lot of the wild flowers are great sources of vitamin D. So, you know, there you go. This is a great, great to know. So you can, for dandelion, wow, dandelion has all possible uses. In other words, if you want to use it orally, uh, like, for your skin, for shampoos, for creams, um, any way that you want to use dandelion flowers, you can absolutely. There's there's no limits, and the leaves you can use the same. You can cook them, you can enjoy them raw. For example, if I find a leaf that is like let's say the bigger ones, I prefer to cook it because I usually chop let's say like onion and garlic or um, you know, I make like, like, I make it more tasty, let's say. And so cooked is like, 
It's great. Raw, the the big leaves are just, you know, they have a taste. So maybe just if you get like the young leaves, use them raw. If you get the bigger leaves, cook them. Uh, but of course, you can also dry them and use them uh, as infusions. And one thing that we haven't actually talked about today is tinctures. I don't know if you if you know anything about tinctures, but it's something else that you can do. It's kind of like it's kind of like uh, an infusion that no, it's uh, no, it's not an infusion. It's like a concentrated uh, mm, product, let's say, uh, from mixing alcohol, like let's say vodka. Uh, but don't worry, the the alcohol sort of disappears. Um, so you can mix that with the plant, and then you can use it uh, in your skin or in you know, however you want. Any questions? Let me look. I'm just too busy watching the presentation to watch the chat. <coughs> da, 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 da. Guys, always please remember to put four question marks before and after your questions so that I don't miss them. People are talking a lot about dandelion tea. Mm -hmm. Dandelion tea is an awesome... Okay, right now, for example, spring is here, right? I mean, we have all kinds of beautiful plants sprouting and growing and dandelion is always an amazing um, welcome to, to spring. Why? Because bees love it. So it's a great uh, flower. Since it sort of flowers from the beginning of spring, it's great for, uh, for bees. So it's great for your garden, first of all. Um, but when other flowers start coming out, that's kind of like what I do. When other flowers start coming out, I start taking dandelion flowers and I start either drying them or you know using them fresh. Um, dandelion tea is amazing. It, it, it's so beneficial, so beneficial. Look at all these things. It has copper, phosphorus, potassium, iron, calcium, sodium, and magnesium. Calcium, for example, we talk a lot about calcium, you know, in the sense that um, a lot of people don't know, like if they stop eating animal products, where would they get their calcium? Well, there you go, guys. I mean, it's like, I should add that every plant, every edible plant, so actually maybe even the, the ones that are not edible, but every edible plant that we want to eat, they all have the macronutrients that we need, the, the uh, micronutrients that we want to eat, um, calcium, or, or usually uh, green, you know, leafy greens, whether wild or, or, or domesticated, they always have lots of calcium. Um, uh, magnesium, that, that combination, calcium, magnesium is so important for your body. Um, and so, you know, it's like, you don't even think, I have to think about it. Like you just eat these plants and enjoy them without even worrying about, oh, am I getting that nutrient or not? Because yes, you're getting it. You're getting all the nutrients that you, that you want. Now I wanted to say something special about in this uh, particular picture that I'm showing here, because I, I think that you guys can see that there's lots of grass. And I want to tell you also that um, this is, I guess, an extra, an extra plant. Um, grass is absolutely edible. All grasses are edible and they are as nutritious or are as nutrient uh, nutrient dense as grasses like wheatgrass. And so if you have your backyard that you, you know, that you know it's completely safe to, uh, to eat whatever you have there because you don't put any chemicals and it's not contaminated at all. Um, by the way, um, if you have a doggy or something like that and your dog pees in the grass, that's not contamination. So just just to make that, uh, uh, you know, clarification. But so anyway, so you could have an area of your yard where you just let the grass grow. And so it could be just like a little patch 
And instead of spending your money on like wheat grass, of course you can if you want to, but you can also just enjoy regular grass. It's full of chlorophyll, vitamin K, vitamin C, uh, of course, calcium, uh, magnesium. Um, it really, it's, 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 they're amazing, amazing plants. So, okay, so I'll go to, um, you know, the other subject that we have for today, which was, you know, to, to well, health. And so how do we help our body, whether is whether with amazing wild edibles or, you know, our normal edibles that we, that we love? Well, we help our body by allowing our body to detoxify. And detoxification is so important and we do it every day. Even breathing is a way to detoxify. You know, when we sweat, we're detoxifying. Uh, when we pee, go to the bathroom, we're detoxifying. And so all of these plants help us in that process, whether they're wild edibles or not. So detoxification is the, just simply the process of toxin and elimination. And so let's allow our bodies to do it and let's, Feed our bodies with the right, uh, you know, with the right fuel. Just, just a little thing that I want to mention too, that detoxification. Um, if if I breathe something that's in the air and it's not good, the first thing I'm going to do is either cough or sneeze, and that means that I'm allowing that toxin, whatever went in, to go out. It doesn't mean that we're sick. It actually means that our body is detoxifying our immune system works and that we are activating uh, our, our defenses to throw something out. So, but you know, if we may go to a doctor, they will probably tell us, oh, you're sick or, or someone else, you know, they may say, oh, you're sick, you're not sick, you're, you're actually detoxifying. So let's allow our bodies to do that. Um, because a healthy body allows life to sprout and to develop. That is so cool. You know, it, yeah, would, and it would be so fun to have you come back and, and maybe do a cooking demo and use some of these items. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, whenever you want. I would love people. I, I just, you know. I think no, people, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, I think people would love to see how they can actually be used. Absolutely. Yes, we can do, we can do some recipes with like leafy greens. Um, we can do an infusion too. Um, I would love to see that margarita. Kathy says if your yard is sprayed or you fertilize with nitrogen, how long before it's safe to eat the weeds from our yard? Great question, Kathy. Well, I think, um, you know, there's the growth. Imagine your grass, uh, the, 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 the first layer of your grass. So if you keep cutting it or if you've been cutting your grass for a while, um, I would say that a few months I would wait for sure. Um, at least at least six months um, for other things even longer. But you know just make sure that whatever was there when you, when you arrived, uh, it's gone. I mean, rain really, and that's why, you know, all these fertilizers and chemicals are so bad, not just for us, but for our planet, because every time it rains, rain takes everything, right? And so that rain really ends up, um, I mean, it, it ends up in the rivers, of course, it ends up in the, oh yes, in the sewing systems, but where where do these do these go? You know, they really end up in the rivers, they end up in the ocean. And so whatever we use, it just ends there. People, sometimes people don't know when they put these, you know, pesticides or chemicals in, the, in, in their yards or in the ground, they, it's like they're, they're thinking only like this much, you know, like in their, in their own space. And it, the life of that stuff is, is, is long. So that's a, that's a really good question, Kathy. Maybe you want to, um, because it also depends on your 
on your area, like how much it rains, you know, if it's really hot. So if you get very little rain, because rain helps wash things off, you know, water helps that. So perhaps look in your area, um, or at least in your climate, you know, your, your zone, um, and see, but I would wait a few months. Even if you buy, for example, let's say that you buy a flower that you love uh, and you just want to plant that flower or have that plant at home, I wouldn't eat the first flowers that come out because I don't know what they put, you know. So I would wait like a couple of cycles of, or at least the flowers that are there, I would just wait until they're, they're gone. And if there's buds, I would just wait um, until they grow and then new stuff comes out. Um, I mean, sometimes it's better just to grow things with the seed, you know, like start from the seed because at least it's like your baby under your control all the time instead of, you know, somebody else that you don't know. So I just, you know, like in this slide, I just wanted to just, you know, remind us that whatever, uh, what, whatever contaminants are out there, they can, of course, you know, be in our inner system. But that's why it's so important to keep our inner ecosystem healthy, um, as well as our, our outer ecosystem, you know, because it's not just the inner part that affects us, it's also what's around us. That's what's called the, the terrain, you know, that's really what affects us. Well, so... This has been so interesting. I look forward to having you back and cooking with us again, because this is something I really don't know very much about. Sure, absolutely. Well, if anybody's interested, um, we've created, so WFPB, wholefoodplantbase.org, is another, um, it's another, it's a, it's a, it's a nonprofit organization uh, that I've also founded. And we publish a universal guideline. So every, it, that, you know, it, it covers the main pillars of health and all these things. So if anybody's interested, free, it's free to download. If anybody's interested, they just go to wfpb.org and download it. Um, and also I wanted to share with you that we do have some cookbooks. My next cookbook, so you'll maybe AJ, if you are, um, I don't know if you're up to it. Maybe we can do something like with wild edibles because it will be about wild edibles. So anybody who enjoyed this interview, you know, just uh, wait for it because I will have my my next cookbook about you know these wild uh, amazing plants. And so this is the code. So remember. So if you like it or if you enjoy whole foods and like all our plant-based lifestyle, lifestyle plus a bunch of other stuff that we should know, um, you know, to keep our inner ecosystem and our outer ecosystem healthy. So go to nakedfoodmagazine.com. If you just click on subscribe and put the promo code Chef AJ as like one word and you can get the um, digital subscription for only $15. That is amazing. So, Thank you so much, Margarita. My pleasure. My pleasure. It was wonderful connecting with you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when my guest is Dr. Rajiv Bajakal. He not only lost weight and reversed his type 2 diabetes by going on a vegan diet, he is an orthopedic surgeon and he's going to be talking about osteoporosis, bone health, and how to help neck and back pain. Take care, Margarita. Please be in touch for another date to come back and cook. Ciao, AJ. Ciao. Thank you ciao. for <laughs> Ciao. <laughs>